I'm a huge fan of the boar, so when I heard this one is getting an Incarnate Genesis adapter, I was super excited. And I gotta be honest with you, the weapon did not disappoint, but it's definitely a bit quirky. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into the Incarnate Boar. We're gonna be skipping the new player build simply because these Incarnate Genesis adapters are anything but new player friendly. That said, I'm still gonna be going through everything that you need to know. What evolutions to pick, how does a build look like, what kind of performance you can expect out of the weapon. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the Incarnate Boar. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. I would recommend you get yourself a Boar Prime after you got the Incarnate Genesis Adapter because this will be the most powerful version of the weapon. And you gotta go for headshots, unfortunately not body shots, body shots will not be loading the Incarnate form, so go steadily for headshots, make sure you get all that multi-shot in your target's head to get the fastest charge. The crosshair is essentially identical to any other Incarnate weapon and with any level of load you can go Incarnate form when the weapon changes functionality and appearance as well. In Incarnate form, essentially this one is a beam weapon, very similar to the Torrid. If you already played with the Incarnate Torrid, essentially this is how this one functions. It's got a limited range by default by about 20 meters, and the beam will be chaining to two additional targets. Now this beam, however, uh, acts a little bit funny. First of all, the damage. The damage seems to be dropping off 25% as it jumps to an additional target, so you're going to be hitting three in total. But this one also has a weird lock-on feature. Take a look at this. Got it? It locks on to the target automatically, which is fantastic, right? No, it's bloody terrible because it does not allow the user to get goddamn headshots. And this is a high critical weapon. It would be a big difference between headshots and body shots when it comes to the performance. Not only that, but take a look at this. Yeah, you're seeing that right. It's locking on to three targets simultaneously. And I switched to the classic numbers in Warframe because using the new numbers would make tracking these things a whole lot more troublesome. So there you go. This is how the beam acts. It's a bit funky. It locks on to targets and sometimes it splits into multiple directly from the weapon. And yes, those individual beams can spread to two additional targets. So nine targets at a time. This is how the weapon behaves, and in order for you to get access, or better said, manipulate that beam as best as you can, you gotta aim in between targets. Like that. But it's no guarantee that the actual beam will split. Sometimes it does split, and sometimes it doesn't, so bear that one in mind. Again, try to hit, hit between targets if you can. Again, sometimes it works, and there you go, now it works, and then it doesn't. And again... Each and every individual beam that comes out of the weapon is going to be linking to two additional targets. And this is not multi-shot at play here, or I don't think it's multi-shot at play. This is simply how the weapon acts. It's a bit more kooky, a bit more funky, if you will. Level 1 simply enables the transformation. Your first choice will come at level 2 between Refight Bane and Fortress Salvo. I like Fortress Salvo. 16 base damage with armor over 450 for meters worth of punch through now that is fantastic but your warframe will need that 450 and above armor why don't you try this one refight bane 10 damage but another 10 once you reload from empty and that buff is not time gated by any stretch of the imagination you simply do a reload from empty once and you retain the buff throughout the duration of the mission in normal and incarnate form we're gonna be going like so tier 3 is the usability tree you can go for reload speed you can go for increased ammo capacity to 195 this only affects you in normal form and incarnate form your maximum charge is 150 and you also can get increased accuracy by 50 percent for my two cents either re the reload speed especially considering that by default the boar has an abysmal reload at 2.8 seconds or the increased accuracy by uh 50 percent my one issue is that that reload from empty doesn't seem to kick in all the time. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't... I don't know. As for the accuracy, this one is only really usable in the normal form of the board. And I know you just want to play in incarnate form, but you will be amazed at the level of performance this weapon has single target wise when it comes to the normal form because of the stat upgrades once you use that incarnate genesis adapter so you know what go for whatever you desire as 
long as really retaliation works fine you should go for that one because reload speed helps with the weapon transformation speed and all whatnot from uh, normal to incarnate evolution 4 these are the juicy ones you get yourself increased status chance by 12 percent and i know that you guys don't like elemental balance we want more credits on our screen yay pretty numbers in which case you're probably going to be going for this one critical parallel 20 percent critical chance yes that is a base value in the sense that it increases the base goes to 40 percent which is absolutely huge in that 2.7 uh, critical multiplier because it also gets 0 0.5 from this one or you can go for the balance approach survivor's edge with 10% critical chance and 6% status chance you know what you're going to be stacking up your heat procs on your targets lightning quick anyway go for the critical chance sure indulge in a bit more crit in terms of a build, if you're more of a newer player and you want to build a Boar Prime, this is not the guide for you. These Incarnate Genesis adapters are anything but new player friendly. You should check out my full and detailed Boar Prime review. Link the cards right now. But if you're the kind of tenor that simply wants a build to slap on the weapon and you don't care how things actually work, you can simply use this build and it's going to be getting the job done, no problem. As for an endgame setup, you're looking something like this. Let's get the elephant out of the room. You're going to be building what? Vital heat or corrosive heat? What you can do is use a secondary primer and build vital like that and not build it on the weapon. But if you're going to be coming across something like steel path circuit, then you're up a creek without a paddle. I prefer my weapons to be self-contained and to be able to deal the damage without any outside help. But if you're going to be building vital through something like Grendel's ability through the helmet system or you want to use a secondary epitaph, you can renounce the vital on the build because when it comes to shotguns, there's a lot, and I mean a lot of fantastic mods that you can use on this one. Galvanized Hell, Galvanized Savvy, yes, it does work, and it's going to be bouncing off Heat, Vital, and Slash from Hunter Munitions, because you got a Hunter Munitions, in this case, considering the super high crit, 120%, and I'm only using Critical Deceleration, thanks to that 40% base. It's absolutely insanity. If you don't like Bane mods, dude, I don't like a Bane mod. Whatever, I don't want to use them, fine. Go with Prime Point Blank. If you're going to be going with Prime Point Blank and you're getting a truck ton of flat damage through Prime Point Blank and Galvanize Savvy, forget about Merciless. Instead of Merciless, use Vendetta. Okay, so this is the way you go if you don't want to use that Bane mod. We're going to be testing like this, then I'm going to show you the other setup, and then we're going to be talking about a Riven mod. Yes, yes? Fantastic. All right, so... On the table, what do we got? Level 165, Corrupted Heavy Goons with the Steel Path modifiers enabled. And once again, I am using the classic damage numbers because the new ones, I think, would get you guys a bit more confused. I mean, they get me a little confused. This is what we'll do. I'll show you the weapon's performance in normal form after a couple of kills. And then I'm going to go in Karnan form. Trust me, it'll be worth the wait. So, a single shot in this guy's head. Look at that. That is insanity. And by the way, the weapon is not fully stacked. The slash values can get to crazy high levels. And if you think that the hundred something thousand slash is impressive, ooh, you haven't seen anything just yet. My point is the weapon can easily one-shot high level steel path enemies without any issue. Even if you're talking about corrupted heavy goons, which let's be honest, they may not be the absolute toughest targets, but there are no pushovers either. With a single shot out of this weapon, you're looking at 12 slashes, 6 vitals, and a couple of impacts as well, something of the sort. This is not a slouch of a weapon, even in its normal form, thanks to the bonuses from that uh, Genesis adapter. Oh, Reload from Empty, by the way, is active. You can take a look in the upper right portion of the screen. You see that little icon, that little buff with no timer? That's the thing. Now, for the Incarnate 4, I'm going to try to get the most I can out of it. Since I cannot go for headshots, we're going to go like so. And you're going to see how the weapon stacks up. Now, that is not bad. But if you use the Torrid, you probably saw this kind of performance before. Honestly, the weapon can melt absolutely everything that stands before it. But you see my first target here. You might be disappointed. Dude, you, you didn't do anything. It, the beam curved. The beam locks on to something else and it tricks you thinking that it doesn't actually do damage to the targets. But it does. It just doesn't deal damage to the targets that you want. Which again, I think this lock on feature is... If I call it stupid, would that be too harsh? Okay, so I'm not gonna call it stupid, even though I feel it's kind of stupid. Let's say it's not the most inspired move I've seen from the developer up until this point. It does, it curves the control I have over the weapon. And in a normal mission, it's weird because I want to kill the target that's in front of me. And the weapon won't. It'll be like, nah, bro, kill that guy. <laughs> Why? Why do you do this? 
don't get me wrong, the power is here. It's like there's a truck ton of power here. But why did you take away my control? Especially considering that I don't get access to that fantastic headshot multiplier, which matters a whole lot, especially on a high critical weapon. Anyway, that's enough rambling about that. We're gonna be taking away Shotgun Vendetta. We're gonna go with the Prime Cleanse mod, and instead we're gonna go for the tried and true recipe of... What was it? Primary Merciless. You can even play with Frostbite if you want. Yeah, if you can get some cold on the weapon or some other way, you can even play with that one. As for the excellent slot, at this point, I think you all are... Smart enough to know exactly what to use in that one, yeah? You, yeah? Okay, good. Fantastic. So, one more time. Go for headshots. I was unstacked too. I promised I would show you normal performance before because honestly, I prefer using the weapon in its normal form. I know it's a bit anticlimactic for a incarnate weapon, but this is how I enjoy the weapon more. That 170,000, if I max out with all the mods and the ribbons and everything that I have, I can get it easily to 450,000. That was a 240,000 slash 175, 250 something. Look at this. Isn't that freaking beautiful? Isn't that freaking fantastic? So the weapon definitely shreds. If you're looking for single target damage, then I would not use it in its incarnate form. And if you just want to use the sweep approach, then you go incarnate form, like so. Look, look at the beams. Look, multiple beams. Three out of my gun. What was it? Three or four? Three out of my gun at the same time. See that? It may be inconsistent, but damn, isn't it ever pretty? Yes, I know. So these are the build variations, which is more powerful, obviously, the one I'm using now. Yes, you, you do understand that, because most of the weapon's damage comes from damage over time. Therefore, you have that... Uh, faction mod modification which matters a whole lot and you can melt whatever stands before you in case you were unclear in case i didn't make the message clear enough this is a very 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 powerful weapon and if you enjoy the torrid you're going to be loving this one as well a uh, benefit to the torrid is the fact that that one doesn't need headshots to be charged and it's got a larger charge this one only has 150 and you gotta go for headshots but it does definitely work I can, however, push it even further than this, because at the end of the day, you know what? It's a Dispo 5 out of 5. I told you guys to buy Rivens, didn't I? And maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I got mine, I don't know, in 2019 or something of the sort. So I can do this, I can do this, and I can do this. In a setup such as this, I can even renounce the flat damage from Galvanized Savvy and go for the Faction mod. But then again, only flat damage from Primary Merciless isn't really gonna be enough. So we're gonna be going like a soup. <laughs> I can always renounce the vital and get vital for some other place, like the Panzer Vulpophila, and when she doesn't vital on the targets, I can get mad and annoyed. Also possible. One more time for headshot. Did I show you the ribbon? It's multi-shot critical chance minus impact, if I didn't show it to you, which is why the numbers, yes? Beautiful, beautiful numbers. Look at that. And this is without a Bane mod, by the way. 200,000 there. 191. 118, obviously one shots, all of them. Yes, 200,000. And if I put the affection mod and the ribbon, then you can get up to 450. I think I saw 480, something of the sort. And of course, incarnate form and transform into this. It, does, it doesn't even matter that I move my cursor. It's just going to lock onto something by default. And it always locks onto the chest area here of the target. It never goes for a goddamn headshot. What else is there to say? That's pretty much it. I am not disappointed in the slightest. I am a boar fan. I don't think there's a lot of us out there, but I am definitely a boar fan, and I love what they did with this weapon outside of the lock and mechanic. I don't understand it. I don't think we need it. And I need the whole beam splitting into multiple, either to be solid and consistent or not at all. One of the two. Now, of course, you're gonna say, dude, you're standing, he's still target shooting, it's horrible, it's terrible. I tell you, okay, fine, let's just, let's just, oh my god, I just have enough. Fantastic, okay, so I'm gonna be getting vital from the Panzer Vulpophila and I can go like this. Now for the rec- Ooh, but then I don't need Merciless, guys, I got enough, more than enough. There you go. Here's another build for you, since I got plenty of damage from point blank, you got yourself your savvy, you got- I can use Vendetta, all I gotta do is remember to be within 5 meters of the target, get vital from a freaking Epitaph or something like a Panzer Vulpa, like so, and this should be even more juicier, yes, yes. Welcome to the void, my friends. Now let's see what the weapon can do in Steel Path against the Corrupted level 120. This will be a survival, and we're also going to be having an Acolyte test as well. 
Now, the lock-on feature works a whole lot better than actual gameplay, but again, when you meet a beef target and you're trying to hit him, sometimes the beam decides that, you know what, never mind this guy, kill the other guy first. Which is not ideal. It doesn't happen all the time, but it's enough to happen once to get you annoyed. But as you can see, it's quite easy to use. Now, I'm going to be drawing some comparison to the Torrid, considering that these kind of function the same way. The turret, however, locks on to more targets by default from a single beam. You get a total of six targets hit from the beam of the turret. If I remember right, that is. I should recheck my guide on that one. This one, however, has the potential to lock on to nine targets. But sometimes you only get a single beam. It only locks on to three targets. So again, it all comes that to that wonky beam mechanic. Sometimes it works beautifully well. And other times, not so much, and I still can't get over the fact that I can't aim for headshots. However, however, on the positive side, if you're looking for a weapon that's really easy to use, this is even easier than the Arca, which essentially fills the room, because you, you just kind of point it away. And it just, like, shifts to that target. The beam curves. It doesn't really curve, it just changes direction like that, and locks onto target. So it's super, super easy to use. If you don't enjoy weapons that need to be aimed, Totally unironically this time. Definitely go for something like this. It's extremely easy to use. You're gonna have no problem with this one. As for actual performance, obviously it was gonna clear normal level steel path without any issue. Considering the stacking of the buffs, you're gonna be able to kill high level as well. And when I say high level, I mean levels in the thousands. Right now, I guess you notice the fact that my Vulpophila doesn't have the chance to apply vital procs be because everything dies. Way before she actually gets a chance to wake up. In high levels, however, that should not be the case. You're going to be taking a little while longer to kill your targets, giving the Vulpophila the time to apply the Vital Procs, which will mean much, much beefier damage over time. Was that a flash? Was that a flash? That might have been a flash. Was that you, Santa? Oh, look at Santa! There we go. Full charge, incarnate form. Let's angst. Okay. So this is a good situation because I'm one-on-one -on -one with her and the beam will only lock on to her. But as you can see, the damage that I'm dealing isn't that fantastic. Why isn't it all that fantastic? Simple. This weapon relies on dealing damage over time through procs. And as you go, no acolytes can only have four at a time of a single proc. Look at the health bar of angst. So I'm going to change to normal when I know I have more flat damage and I'm going to shoot her in the face like this, which should make a bigger impact. Does it? Hmm. I think it did. Where'd she go? Don't tell me she freaked off. I think she's there somewhere. You know what? Let's just activate AoE. There's too many damage numbers on the screen. A pretty weak showing for the Acolyte, but I expected as much considering the amount of flat damage that this weapon has. Again, it kills with procs. So when it comes to an Acolyte showing, not exactly the most powerful weapon you can take for person as an Acolyte. But if you want a secondary weapon that can blow up an Acolyte before you get a chance to finish your blink, link the cards right now. Very well, gentlemen, let's draw some conclusions. It's a good weapon. It is certainly a very powerful weapon, but it's got some wonky mechanics. Now, I can't say at this time, since it's still early days for the weapon, if that lock-on mechanic, if that beam is supposed to function like that or not. To me, it looks like that's what they intended. It does give the Incarnate Boar an added flavor that none of the other weapons do, granted. But it also, I feel it limits the usability of the weapon and doesn't really help players that legitimately like to aim. And again, you are missing out on that headshot multiplier, which would hurt a whole lot more considering the high crit this one is capable of. I fully recommend the weapon, it is powerful and you're gonna be loving it if you're looking for weapons that are easy to play with. There are a few other incarnate weapons which are on this level of ease of use, so I can at least give it that. What do you guys think about the incarnate board? Let me know in the comment section down below. Are you happy? Are you not happy? Are you pleased? How did you build yours? As always, my name is Malazar, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. And stay tuned for more Warframe awesomeness. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.